All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Hi, my name is Jessica Pritchard. I work at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History, and I'm joined by uh, my colleagues Charlotte Zemer and Juliana Logan. And we um, are here to represent the museum as well as the Sea Center, the one on Fisherman's Wharf. So um, let me get you started and share my screen with you. All right. So the museum has been around for um, over 100 years, 105 years to be exact, and we are um, so um, lucky to be a part of the community, but also um, our museum is uh, specially located along Mission Creek. So it's a wonderful way to talk about the natural world, but then actually experience the natural world. Um, and the Sea Center is located on Fisherman's Wharf. So we both have the opportunities to really go into nature, even um, and, and talk about nature as well. But I'm gonna talk about a couple of opportunities. So um, there are opportunities at the museum and at the Sea Center that are both really wonderful. At the museum, you might see this big blue whale skeleton named Chad, he's really fun. But at the museum, we have these docent opportunities. So you can work with children, you can work with our adult visitors and family visitors that come in. Um, at the museum, we have uh, virtual opportunities as well. We've been doing virtual field trips for students K through 12, mostly K through six. Um, but we've been able to do that um, all, all year and we're doing it through spring and summer. So if you're interested, we would love to have you um, come on as a co-host to help with the technical aspects of the field trip, but also to share your passion of the natural world with kids. It's a really fun opportunity. It's usually 30 to 60 minutes, um, these opportunities. But also when we go back in person, hopefully by fall, maybe a, a smaller um, field trip capacity, but we would love to have you come and actually lead school field trips through the museum, but also teach really interactive hands-on classes um, where we really get to deep dive into nature. Um, so it's a really active position. It's really creative. You get to work with kids um, and then, uh, uh, the staff as well to come up with programs and really give your feedback as well. So it's a really good opportunity if you're really into um, presenting and giving, being performing arts, but also working with students. All right, and I'll pass it over to Juliana. Hi everyone, I'm Juliana. I'm the volunteer coordinator here at the C Center. And so all of our volunteers start off as what we call exhibit interpreters. And so what they do is they meet and greet and educate our guests and just get them excited about all of the amazing marine life that we have here at the, Santa, uh, at the Sea Center and found in the Santa Barbara Channel. So we have our touch tanks, our shark touch tank, our intertidal touch tank, our wet deck, which mimics a scientific research vessel, um, and then we have our abalone diversity cart and our marine mammal cart. So that's what volunteers all start off as. We also have some advanced opportunities available for volunteers after you have met an initial um, time commitment with us as an exhibit interpreter. We also have in the summer, we also have this wonderful opportunity to um, be involved with our butterfly exhibit. So if you've ever been to the museum in the summer, in between Memorial Day and Labor Day, we have this Butterflies Alive exhibit. So it's an exhibit where um, you can walk through a beautiful butterfly garden um, that's in a pavilion with um, over nearly a thousand live butterflies flying all around you with these lovely plants. Um, and there, it's an exhibit that features really a dazzling variety of butterflies. And you get to learn about the life cycle and the behavior of these specific species. And you get to um, guide visitors through this exhibit, but also help them stay safe and also um, respect the butterflies distance as well. So um, you'll um, be able to, um, if, if, you're, if we're going to be able to offer some more interpretive uh, aspects like cards and, and ID guides, we have those um, throughout the space as well. So it's a really fun opportunity to work with the staff, but also work with um, with butterflies and to work with families. So um, we hope that you will check this out. You can check out this URL. It's called the magic window. It kind of gives us you, you behind the scenes of the butterflies life cycle when we, um, we actually have a lab where we raise the butterfly cocoons and then we release them into the pavilion. So um, you can check that out in your free time. 
but we would love for you to join our volunteer team. Um, and if you have any questions, please um, go to the following URL or you can join us in the breakout room later and uh, we'd be happy to answer that. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, so you can um, join Jessica and Charlotte and Juliana in their room, Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History and Sea Center. Um, they're there to answer all of your questions and, um, and they're a great group. And I believe your museum is open too, is that correct? Yes. Yes, we are. Yes, both of our museums are open. Um, you can make a reservation online to visit the museum. And then the Sea Center, you don't need a reservation. You can just go out on Fisherman's Wharf. Very nice. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so next up we have um, CI Dolphin Pantry. I, I, Jennifer Maravola was having issues um, coming into the room, so I don't see her yet. So maybe we can come back to her um, in a in a minute. Um, let's see. Saving Lives Camarillo. Um, Allison, are you here or are you still in your room? I'm here. Um, Thank you. Hi, Allison. Okay, so um, are you ready to present? Yeah, sure. Why okay, not? let me just, um, for everyone who is not, um, who had, has just come on, we're having main presentations in this room, but in the breakout rooms, you can go, um, you can see a list of all of our partners who are um, ready and waiting to answer any of your questions or um, you know talk further about the organization. So, um, so right now we have Saving Lives Camarillo, and then after that we will have Oxnard Public Library. Okay, go ahead. Perfect. Am I able to share screen? I yes, so. you should be able. Perfect. To. Good morning. Um, thank you for inviting us to present about Saving Lives Camarillo. My name is Allison Lucas and I'm the community director of the coalition there. We're an um, alcohol and drug prevention coalition and we work mostly with youth in education and educational programs. So a little bit of background about our coalition is that we were founded um, about 10 years ago in 2019 as a response to a spike in youth drug use and opioid overdose. Um, the Sheriff's Office recognized this spike and wanted to collaborate with the city to come up with different meaningful and useful tools to reduce substance use. Um, we're funded by a federal grant and we are now funded by a BCBH partner and prevention program. And we're mostly comprised as a coalition of community members who all have this common mission of not only implementing a one-time intervention when we see drug use really take over a student's life or an adult's life, but implementing preventative measures throughout youth's life to make sure that they have the tools they need to be healthy and successful. Um, we partner with different people in the community to do all different types of events, um, some of which include after prom, we have a monthly coalition meeting for anyone who wants to get involved and get more information about what we do in our current campaigns. We host different types of parent education nights about the substances that we're seeing in schools. Um, and we also host youth presentations, which are some of my favorite. I love working in youth development, so if that's something you're interested in, um, we have some really awesome middle and high schoolers who do things such as that. We work with pharmacists on safe prescribing practices. We have a lockbox campaign, a parents who host lose the most campaign and several different trainings that are in collaboration with national organizations. Here is an example of one of our coalition meetings. And um, we have different people from the community. This was one of our parent education nights on vaping and e-cigarette products. Here's just an example of the different events that we've hosted, um, opioids and alternate methods for managing pain, and then also um, another side pro project in the schools for a quiet moment, which if anyone's interested, I can 
discuss more in detail, um, but it's basically a positive mindfulness program for students to build healthy self-image. Um, more campaigns, town hall panel, et cetera, different types of community events to educate the community. Uh, tabling events are really popular and we're starting to be able to get back into that as uh, COVID vaccines are rolled out and certain safety measures are taken. Here's a picture of our youth uh, coalition members at the Cat Cafe <laughs> at one of their meetings. Um, here's an example of one of, our, one of our PSAs that we've made, but I, I won't play it now for the sake of time, but we've made um, several different PSAs that are on YouTube. Oh. Again, we just have different partnerships and prevention. So if you're interested in working with BCBH, uh, the school districts, the police department, or learning about pharmacies and pharmacy practices, um, we're a great place for you to start building those relationships within this community and understanding the inner workings of how they all collaborate together. Again, uh, here's just a outlay of what exactly it is that we do and that we're contracted to do. I won't read through all of it, but um, it gives a good example for a volunteer coming in, thinking about what types of service projects they can do with us. Working with community stakeholders and identifying different take back locations, um, et cetera. Some of our current projects, we have youth research presentations. Um, these are high schoolers, but we would love to do a more in-depth presentation with um, college students. And youth research helps give us a really, really great perspective on filling in gaps in information to help better guide the county and the city and the health needs of the community um, with regards to substance use. We also host different types of art and essay contests. So anyone looking to volunteer on graphic design for these essay contests and promotion, um, we would gladly accept volunteers in that aspect. We also have a Drug, uh, drug disposal door hanger campaign, which just advocates for safe disposal. And that's another volunteer project. We have youth development, um, research opportunities, and different types of internship opportunities available. And so if you're passionate about any of these things, um, you can have opportunities to intern at our office, volunteer as a student researcher, and if you'd like to contact us, here is all the information you need. Please feel free to reach out. This is my work cell, and I will give you a call back and would love to connect. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Um, okay, so next up we have Leticia Edwards from the Oxnard Public Library. Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Leticia Edwards and I am the volunteer coordinator for the Oxnard Public Library. Um, I have a video presentation that I'll go ahead and share with you now and I'll be available um, until one o'clock for any questions and I'll be in the breakout room. So let me go ahead and play that video for you now. The Oxnard Public Library is celebrating our 114th year of service this year. The library is traditionally funded by the Andrew Carnegie Foundation. Today, the library is part of the city of Oxnard and has three branches. The Can main you, library. Do you want to share yes. your screen? Oh, I thought I did. Sorry. Thank Oxnard you. The Branch Library at 4300 Savers Road and the Colonial Branch Library located at 1500 Camino del Sol. The mission of the Oxnard Public Library is to enrich the lives of our diverse community by providing free equal access to the resources. I'm going to go ahead and start that over. The Oxnard Public Library is celebrating our 114th year of service this year. The library was established in 1907 and was originally funded by the Andrew Carnegie Foundation. Today, the library is part of the city of Oxnard and has three branches. The main library at 251 South 8th Street in downtown Oxnard, 
South Oxnard Branch Library at 4300 Sabres Road, and the Colonia Branch Library located at 1500 Camino del Sol. The mission of the Oxnard Public Library is to enrich the lives of our diverse community by providing free and equal access to the resources, services, and programs that encourage lifelong learning and lead to future success. The library offers a variety of free services to the community. There are different types of materials available for checkout, such as books, magazines, DVDs, books on CD, music CDs, and test review materials. All of these formats are also available in e-content. The library also offers online services for streaming books, music, and movies. Online programming is available for all ages. The library has two homework centers as well as a literacy outreach program. Currently, all of these programs are provided digitally. CSUCI students can help make a difference in the community by providing their time to our volunteer program. There are several volunteer opportunities available. Volunteer opportunities are generally in person. However, we do have some volunteer opportunities during the pandemic, which are virtual. The Homework Center is located at the main library at South Oxnard Branch Library. The Homework Center volunteers assist students in grades kindergarten through 12th with homework completion. This is a great opportunity for someone who is interested in working with students. The Homework Center hours are Monday through Thursday from 3 to 7. There is a Homework Center coordinator on site during open hours. The Literacy Outreach Program provides one-to-one -one tutoring to adults in the community who need help improving their English language skills, reading, writing, and verbal. The program is free to any adult who can meet with a volunteer tutor once or twice a week. During the pandemic, learners and tutors are meeting virtually. Each learning session lasts approximately one to two hours. Adult learners and their tutors commit to at least three months of working together. This volunteer opportunity is extremely rewarding as tutors assist learners with personal goals such as passing the citizenship test, obtaining a driver's license, or feeling comfortable reading to their grandchild. Literacy volunteer tutors attend required tutor training with our literacy coordinator before being matched with an adult learner. Volunteer tutors do not need to have any prior tutoring experience. A desire to help an adult work toward their personal goal is all that is needed. All training and tutoring take place at the main library during regular library hours. The gift shop at the main library is run by the Friends of the Library Foundation. The Friends of the Library Foundation supports the services of Oxnard Public Library. They raise funds by selling donated books and items in the gift shop. The gift shop sells a variety of merchandise such as small sculptures, stationery, and jewelry. The hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, and Saturdays, 11 to 5. Volunteers in this area provide customer service and sales. The volunteer shifts for this position are 11 to 2 and 2 to 5. Bookie volunteers assist with sorting and pricing of donating books. Bookies also help set up for quarterly book sales. Volunteers trained in technical services can assist with materials processing of new items and book mending. Book cleaning and sorting are two of the most important volunteer duties for circulation and branch services. Other volunteer opportunities include special projects and clerical tasks. Volunteers may assist with programming setup and work in various areas of the library where there is a need. The volunteer program is crucial to the Oxnard Public Library. It helps the library to provide more services that directly benefit the community. Anyone interested in volunteering for the library can apply at www.oxnard.org. Volunteer applications are listed in the Human Resources Department under Employment Opportunities. The application can be filled out and submitted online. For more information, you can contact the Oxnard Public Library Volunteer Coordinator, Letitia Edwards, at 805-385-7511 or by email, letitia.edwards at oxnard.org. The Oxnard Public Library looks forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Leticia. Um, so if you want to speak to um, anyone from the Oxnard Public Library, um, you can Thank find- you. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so volunteers, you can um, ask Leticia questions in um, one of the breakout rooms. It's labeled Oxnard Public Library. Um, and um, are you all open yet for, for in-person um, services or is it just... Um, we are providing... Okay. okay, breaking up. We're a little providing curves. Okay, we will. Um... Can I can I jump in, Jennifer, if you don't mind? Oh yes. Yeah. There are a couple of virtual opportunities. Hi, Joe. Thank yes, you. welcome. You're, jump, you're um you're cracking up just a little bit, so I hope you don't mind if I just jump in just to answer that question for a second. Um, so the, the Oxnard Public Library buildings are currently closed. Um, we are looking to open during the summer. We're working towards that. Uh, in the meantime, we're offering curbside pickup. Um, so that's when patrons have uh, accounts and you can always register for accounts online. It's free and you can place holds on items and the staff will um, call you for an appointment. Do you need volunteer or... opportunities available if the students are interested? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, um, Oxnard Public Library. Okay, so next we have Thank found um, Jennifer Maravola from CSUCI basic needs program. So she's going to go ahead and present next. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I have a very short presentation because um, it's very basic. Uh, we need people to help us uh, in the pantry, the food pantry. Uh, right now we're running it once a week and it's a curbside pickup model. Um, and there's no contact and students stay in their car and community members. So it is open to anyone. We just have different funding sources that certain things go to everyone and certain things can only go to students. So that's why. Um, and then we are still working on the repopulation plan and how it will look in the fall. So you could potentially be inside the pantry with students or socially distanced, of course, or helping us run groceries back and forth to the cars. And then uh, along with that is, uh, you know, making sure the pantry shelves are stocked. We get delivery every Tuesday from uh, Ventura County Food Share. Um, I'm not the permanent person in that position. There will be someone starting there July 1. I work in a completely different department. But with COVID, I've been helping out the past uh, year, which has been awesome. Um, and then you get to engage with all the community members and make them feel welcomed and just loved and warmed. And I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, and then we all, we're trying to create a, um, well, work with a software that we could have kind of like when you go to like Target or, or Vons or Ralph's where we would start entering all of our um, items into the system. And now students can do a curbside pickup with the items that they want instead of us creating bags for them. Um, we're a small entity that if someone shows up and says, hey, you know what? I only want uh, fresh fruit and vegetables and no more canned goods. We could do that. Uh, but we do believe that uh, coming back to the fall and uh, the repopulation of the students, that basic needs will probably be one of the biggest or most significant sought out um, resources for the students because we know a lot of people were impacted by COVID and lost jobs and not all of them were local when we know they couldn't necessarily access us during COVID. Um, and then we also have a really cool garden that's with the biology club or biology, one of the biology um, classes, I should say. And so if you wanted to work outside and um, get some garden therapy, you could do that as well and just help us with planting it, maintaining it, um, and then uh, trans transporting some of the fruits and vegetables um, back and forth to the pantry. The cool thing is you get a lot of engagement with college students who are uh, eager to help out and give back to their community. Um, and it's just a, it's a really cool operation and we definitely need help. I can't give specifics yet of how many we could have at one point, because as you know, things are changing and the university has a lot to think about. So once that happens, um, you could definitely email us here at the basic needs email. And that's the general line and I'm giving you giving you that one because of July 1 I won't be there anymore and that way at least you someone will receive that um, and get back to you um, and then I'll be in the breakout room if you guys have any questions and I hope to answer them thank you Jennifer can you also um, let everyone know where the garden is located it's behind uh, I just had to ask this because I didn't know either um, it's on campus. 
and it's behind the biology building, which is skipping my mind right now. Okay. Pilar might know, but it is on campus, and it's um, it's a build. It's a building I've never been to in my life, and I've been on campus seven years, so <laughs> I didn't even know we had a garden until about six months ago. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. Is that, so they, Jen, is that by the Modoc building? Um, no, it's uh, okay. I just chatted it with Chelsea this morning. I'll have oh. to. I'll yeah. I'll let someone know. I'll let. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. El Dorado Hall behind Modoc. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, very cool. And then that's it for me, but I also work for Kids and Families Together, so I want to just give a shout out to Jenny, who's on here, and whoever's looking to work for them or volunteer, they're an awesome organization. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so next we have United Way of Ventura County. So we should have Francesca. Hello, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen for our presentation. Here we go. All right. So yes, my name is Francesca D'Amato. I'm an AmeriCorps member with the United Way in Ventura County. So I work primarily with volunteers, volunteer engagement, volunteer recruitment, things like that. Um, I'll go over briefly just what we do at the United Way here, but um, mostly we'll just get into some volunteer opportunities. Um, so our three main focus areas are through health, financial stability, and education. So we have a lot of different programs going on um, at the United Way to meet those needs. So we have a Building Healthy Smiles program. And again, I won't get into the programs too much, but if you do have questions, I'll be in the breakout room. Um, for our education initiative, we have four different programs, Women United, Stuff the Bus, Grad Nation, and Born Learning. For financial stability, we have VIDA, volunteer, volunteer Income Tax Assistance. And this one, some of you guys may be familiar with, a lot of, a lot of college students do volunteer with this. Um, we are currently kind of finishing up. It's almost um, tax, season, tax season is wrapping up. So um, I believe you still might be able to come volunteer if you are interested. I'll be in the breakout room, so let me know. Um, but yeah, just doing tax assistance um, for low-income individuals. And then we have a landlord engagement program, um, which is newer. And I'll touch on this one because we have a volunteer opportunity with this. Um, so our landlord engagement program, we do, um, the director of this program works with landlords to provide housing vouchers to those throughout the county who are experiencing homelessness. So I believe to date we have almost 50 households, that's within the past year, who have been now permanently housed. So I'll talk a little bit about um, a good volunteer opportunity we have with that program in just a minute. And then we have the emergency food and shelter program. So the main thing I wanna talk about is Volunteer Ventura County. Um, so we are a little unique in um, what our organization does. We, we have a few volunteer opportunities here, but the main thing that we do is we provide the volunteer database for the county. So if you are not familiar with Volunteer Ventura County, you can check it out at volunteerventuracounty.org and register as a user. Um, so what Volunteer Ventura County does is engage people with meaningful volunteer opportunities. Um, a lot of the organizations on this call today use VVC as well. So their opportunities are present on the site. Um, so we did, VVC started in 2005 um, and the platforms have changed a bit over the years, but we've been with this one for a few years now. So currently we have, almost 5,500 users. So it has grown a lot in recent years. Um, so I'll talk about a little bit of the opportunities. At any given time, there usually are about a little over 200 volunteer opportunities that you can see. Um, some are virtual, we're trying to get more virtual ones, but a lot of them are still in person, um, just following guidelines. Um, so the first one I'll talk about is with our organization. Um, you can see, if you go to volunteerventurocounty.org, you can see more information on, on all of these. So for the Welcome Home Baskets, I mentioned earlier the Landlord Engagement Program. Um, this is a great volunteer opportunity to kind of welcome home those folks who have been housed after being homeless for so long. Um, so it's just providing a Welcome Home Basket, something with laundry items or kitchen items, bathroom, things like that, just kind of basic getting started things. Um, so we've been doing that for a few months now, and um, we try to get at least a few baskets each month as folks are being housed. Um, and if you do want to put together a basket, all the information is on BBC. So some other opportunities, these are with other organizations who have posted it in BBC. 
So at Ventura County Area Agency on Aging, they have a Walk with Ease program and they're looking for instructors currently to lead that. Um, the Friends of the Camarillo Library needs a newsletter editor. Um, Community Action posts a lot of things. Um, right now they have a lot of different needs going on and opportunities. And then the Samaritan Center of Simi Valley needs a front desk volunteer. So these are just some examples of the many, many in VVC. Um, so again, if you're not familiar, just go ahead and go to volunteerventuracounty.org. You can register as a user. It takes a couple minutes. It's just your name, email, some basic things. Um, and you can see all the opportunities available. Um, and that's about it. I will be in the breakout room um, and my contact information is here as well. But yeah, I would love to answer any questions you have on VVC. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Okay, so up next we have Habitat for Humanity. And uh, I believe Matthew Martinez is here with us. Hi, Matthew, are you ready to present or is it going to be Darcy? Well, it's, it's Darcy actually, uh, but I could be Matthew too, if that's, if that's appropriate. <laughs> okay, I don't see if Darcy is here. He, uh, he Darcy is here, he might be under a different name, oh. uh, which is what confused me as well. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, under, I'm actually under Matthew's name. Well, Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, Darcy, everybody. Can All everybody right. see me? Can you, everybody see me? Yeah, you're good. Okay, good. Yes. Well, <laughs> and you can share so, your screen now if that's something you'd like to do. No, I'll just go ahead. Uh, so uh, obviously, I'm the CEO of Habitat for Humanity, and uh, very excited to share uh, with the group about some of our opportunities uh, uh, for volunteerism. I think what I'd like to do is really just go through the list real quickly and. Uh, given a snapshot of opportunities that we're presenting for this year and kind of moving forward. I think one of the things that I really want to stress is many people see Habitat and they think of us as a home builder, which we are, and that's something that we do, uh, low income home building, but we're so much more and there are so many other opportunities that we want to present to this group today. The first is activism. Um, we're doing uh, a lot of work uh, in Sacramento related to housing, farm worker, uh, rights in those areas as well. And there are a, a plethora of, of opportunities that are available to support uh, those particular things. If you are an individual who is interested in uh, political activism or uh, helping your, your city or county related to building a political environment that supports some of the things that uh, Habitat's involved in. The second thing that we're doing that we're looking for support and in their volunteerism is we do disaster relief as well. We have a, a program that we just released uh, or are participating in that's it's over $3 million to assist and help individuals that are um, been impacted by the local fires and other things associated with that. So there are, are opportunities that are a part of that uh, program as well. And we also have a, a home repair program, a little different than our uh, new build program. It's actually a, a program that we have in the county that assists people that need help on uh, small home repairs, such as a roof, uh, bathroom refitting. Uh, you know, they may do a redo, may redo a kitchen, for example, um, handicap ramps, those kinds of things are part of our, our home repair program. And we're always looking for support in, in that program as well. In particular, looking for people with some kind of expertise uh, in the construction area that can assist our program director, um, uh, Jacqueline Jimenez, to, uh, to do that as well. And then of course, we do have um, two restores in the county um, that we're actively uh, marketing uh, products that we receive and donations that come in to support our work. Uh, and actually that's how Habitat uh, funds uh, most of its businesses through the the restore revenue that's generated through our two stores, one being in Oxnard on Eastman Avenue, the second being in Simi Valley on Los Angeles Avenue. And there are a number of opportunities where volunteers can help us in those stores, uh, working in those stores. And there's a process that um, volunteers go through to be able to participate in that program as well. The last program I wanna share is obviously the, the program that we're most well known for. It's our new build program and Matthew, uh, really uh, handles all the volunteers that come in through that 
uh, portal, but it is a great opportunity for, for volunteers to participate uh, firsthand on building homes around the county and involved in projects that we're doing associated with presenting uh, new home builds to a number of our uh, constituents that are in the county that are low home low income home buyers. Uh, there are just an array of opportunities that present themselves through that program. And we're very happy to be able to um, give people an opportunity to actually drive a nail, uh, put a hard hat on, and actually uh, participate in building a home for a, a future homeowner. So really that in a, in a quick nutshell are the diversity of the programs that we have at Habitat that um, uh, allow for volunteers to participate. And you can go on our website at www.habitatventura.org and there's an application process, a, a place where you can sign up and engage and, and uh, involvement in those volunteer opportunities. Lastly, I would, I would just share this, that you know, our role at Habitat, we are in the last, I think, four years have been evolving from just an organization that's um, uh, providing construction and um, a restore uh, uh, items for sale to more of a community-based nonprofit that's looking at a holistic approach to care for those that are less fortunate in our community. So even though I may not have listed or, or spoken to a specific area of need that you have, I'm sure that if you're concerned about individuals that are less fortunate than a lot of us in this county, um, there's a place for you to volunteer and participate uh, in the work that Habitat's doing. So it's a great opportunity for us to be here today and present. And I'm happy, uh, Jennifer, you invited us to, to participate. And that's really kind of what we're about uh, within the County of Ventura. Again, website, www.habitatventura.org. If you have any questions, um, you can kind of look at our website and get some direction there. That's all I have. Thank you, Darcy. Thanks. Great to hear from you. Thank you. Okay, so next up we have Kids Stream Children's Museum. And we are here. Oh, hi, Christy. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, go ahead. And um, if you'd like to share your screen or I would. Um, okay. I would. I have a little video prepared, a little bit of a presentation, kind of talking about what's coming up, and the video is more about who we are. Okay. Let's see. Um, are you able to share your screen? It should be. Um. Oh. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Yes. All right. right. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. This is a little video. It kind of gives a history of who, what, what Kidstream is for those of you who don't know and uh, a little bit about what we've done, uh, both pre and, dur and during COVID. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we're looking for in this emerging world. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And um, Jennifer, if you just give me a thumbs up if you can hear the audio. Hello everybody, my name is Michael Shankman and I'm the executive director of Kidstream Children's Museum in Camarillo, California. We are excited to bring this project to fruition and I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we do in the community and why what we do is so important. The entire Kids Dream team is deeply passionate about inspiring young people to reach their full potential. Our experiences will allow them to investigate future art and engineering and mathematics, tap into the love of reading, feed that interest in science and expose them to really interesting technology that takes them places they never one of our core values is access. With community partners like you, we can work together to increase and improve access for our entire community so that everyone has the opportunity to learn and be inspired. Our museum experience will introduce children to 21st century learning skills so that they can hone their communication, their cooperation, their collaboration opportunities. Our programming has expanded dramatically during the time of COVID. In addition to online opportunities for learning, like streaming at home, in addition to having children teach other children during our Week of the Young Child celebration, and our summer learning kits, which were both in Spanish and English, we've provided wonderful learning opportunities outside of the museum, coming into people's homes. And now our goal is to be ready for the community to open up when the community is ready to come to us.
you know, I'm actually going to pause the video for just a minute because it goes into kind of a heartstring emotional <laughs> what we've done uh, during COVID and it's up on our site. What I'd like to do actually is pull up the presentation that I kind of wanted to appeal to uh, the group of volu potential volunteers here to tell them a little bit about uh, what we're looking for right now. Um, so I'm going to pull this up. And, um, and Christy, while you're pulling that up, um, yeah. that aerial shot, that building, that is where Kidstream is located. It's in Camarillo. It's off of Ponderosa Drive, right near uh, the Boys and Girls Club, Bob Kildee Park, and the Skate Park. So it is uh, centrally located in Camarillo. Uh, and we are centrally located in Ventura County. So I just wanted to take that opportunity, Christy, while you had that aerial shot. So potential volunteers know where, where we're located. Thank you, Yvette. And Yvette, Yvette Boltz is on here. She is our uh, chair of programming. And so we have been really, really busy. Uh, by the way, can you see the, the beginning of the presentation? Uh, okay, good. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, at least this is partly blocked for me, but, um, our mission as an organization is to create an environment where children can explore, play, and discover. And what we have done uh, in our five years uh, of existence is we've reached about 10,000 children annually. And most of it is actually, actually, I would say all of it up until this past year has been through all volunteer. Uh, so we, we know and absolutely value our volunteer base um, and know um, that it is because of our volunteers that we have been able to fulfill this mission. Um, we've reached them, um, and, and as um, the video elaborated, so that was our executive director whom we hired right before um, right before everything shut down with COVID. And uh, he was a he is a 25 year veteran in the children's museum industry, and it's been wonderful watching this grow. Um, just even in this past year, despite the challenges uh, that we've been um, that everybody has been. <laughs> in the throes of. And uh, what we have done is we've actually done a lot more kit-based and uh, virtual programming, but we are absolutely looking for volunteers uh, for, for that level of outreach, as well as when we can get back into in-person, which is really where our um, the heart of our volunteer base is. I'm gonna go to this next, oops, image. Oh, the next slide. Um, it's kind of semi-block for me, but, um, these are some pictures actually of past volunteer events. They were uh, little snippets in that video that we just saw, but you can see right here that actually we, we accept volunteers as young as uh, 13 historically, especially when they come with an adult. So I don't know if that opens up any opportunities for others who are watching this and thinking you know, about maybe some younger groups of volunteers. I think in this particular case, it was a Girl Scout troop <laughs> who came out uh, to help us with uh, an astronomical event uh, that we were celebrating at the time. And uh, oops, hang on. Um, I don't know if any of you are on here with two devices or have the ability to get on, but I'll put um, I'll put in the chat the the link to sign up as a volunteer. We have a few volunteer back of house opportunities for cataloging, going into that big building that Yvette had mentioned. Um, but it's blocked for me here, but it's kind of cute. I did say that 13 was our youngest volunteer age, but you can see right here, there's a newborn baby <laughs> that was there uh, for a volunteer training event that we had. Uh, we do a ton of, or pre-COVID, we did a lot of uh, hands-on, uh, primarily I'd say STEM outreach, uh, even though our name STREAM is for science, technology, reading, engineering, arts, and math. Uh, so some of it does need a little bit of um, uh, basic training. You don't need to have a background though in science or technology. Um, we do love it if um, our volunteers, you know, it's not required to obviously be bilingual, but that really absolutely helps because a lot of our target uh, outreach is um, in areas that we, we need bilingual um, translators or those who can uh, speak in both English and Spanish um, is, is wonderful, but not required. And uh, Yvette, I did not actually put the dates on here, uh, but I will put them into the chat. We have two upcoming back of house work days. So if anybody's on here, like I said, with a device, if you wanna scan uh, to get the, the, um, the QR code for the, for the link, and I'm gonna put it into the chat here as well. And uh, if anybody has any questions, I see Jenny has a hand up, but um, I don't know if anybody has any uh, questions for us about Kidstream. So that's a, kind of in a nutshell what we are. Uh, the sort of volunteer work that we need help with, it runs the gamut. 
from behind the scenes to in front of the scenes once we can uh, be out uh, with the community again, which we hope is soon. Yeah, I'll just, I'll jump in real uh, clearly and uh, quickly and kind of jump on what Christy was talking about. Uh, in the current environment we do, there's a lot of opportunity back of house things to do to really prepare that large indoor space. We have a lot of things to organize and catalog and move a lot of kits, which um, is if anybody has great organizational skills, um, that would be wonderful. And before the shutdown, we did all, most of our um, events were outreach, community outreach, where we just loved our volunteers. I mean, as Christy said, we couldn't have done it without volunteers. Christy and I are both volunteers as well. And uh, we have been very busy this last year doing a, providing a lot of kits uh, for schools, different um, segments of children, and we plan on continuing to do that. So there are tons of opportunities. If you have any kind of um, uh, leaning towards working with children or education, this is a fabulous opportunity. And I do not have a science background. As, as Christy said, you do not need to have a science background, but just a passion to work with with families, with kids. And uh, we, we definitely are gonna have a lot of opportunities start starting to open up. And yeah, I didn't see the question, but do you, Christy, do you see, is there, is it in the chat or just a raise? You know, I, what I'm putting in is the link uh, for people to sign up. Uh, yeah, I think that you wrote in there, or did you, did I put that? Oh, did it go out to everybody? So I do have the volunteer uh, dates up here in the chat. I put it actually in our breakout room. Uh, we have a, a, a major event coming up, which is Outward Facing on May 24th, where we do need uh, all hands on deck. Uh, you know, obviously, we'd love to have volunteers there. It's a golf tournament, so it can actually be safely socially distanced. Um, but we need volunteers. Uh, serving in Camarillo. There. It also, that one is going to be in Camarillo. Yes, and um, we have two back of house uh, dates coming up, but there are always... Uh, needs. What uh, what we did not mention is that we just received uh, the, the site. Um, let me, I, I don't need to go to the uh, screen share again, but um, oh, wait, somebody's jumped over. I'll, Am uh, I supposed to jump off, Jennifer? <laughs> um, if you could switch, uh, quickly wrap up, that would be Oh, yes. Be great. Yeah. Oh, I could, sorry, I've been sitting in that room, so sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I would just say, please come to the breakout uh, room and ask us any questions. We'd love to chat with you. So we look, we look forward to seeing some of you in the breakout room. And Jennifer, thank you so much for this opportunity. We look forward to being able to do this in person, hopefully next year. Yes, great. Um, and it looks like the breakout rooms closed, but I reopened them. So if you have any problems, um, let me know. And I, and I will try and fix those as quickly as possible. Um, okay, so next we have Community Action of Ventura County. And that should be Claudia and maybe Rosanna, if yes. she's here. Yes, hi, we're both here. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm with Community Action of Ventura County, and we serve the entire county. Um, joining me is also Rosanne, who is our food pantry, our community market coordinator. And um, I'm going to just share a brief presentation because I know we're probably running a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to play a little video for you so you can know um, what we're doing, what we've been doing. That's why all across the country, community action agencies are open and here to ensure the well-being of every American family. For over 50 years, we've been delivering hope and opportunity. Now more than ever, working families need life-changing services, solutions, and stability. Contact your local community action agency today. Okay, so that was just a short video. Um, so, so you know, there are over 1,000 community actions all over the U.S. And we are actually a product out of the war on poverty. And our mission, our specific mission for um, our, our community action here at Ven 
Ventura County is helping our community establish pathways out of poverty through advocacy, partnerships, and services that promote dignity and self-sufficiency. These are the services that we provide. We have homeless services, we have a community market, we have utility assistance, weatherization, and, and community workshops. Also, um, because um, of the COVID situation, because of the pandemic, we also have funds for individuals that need school supplies, that need rental assistance, that need help with their water bill. Um, so those are specific um, services for individuals that have been affected by COVID. Um, these are the areas um, that we would like volunteers to help us on. I feel that if you uh, volunteer, even if it's four hours a week, you will learn a lot about poverty and the hard pressure issues that are affecting our community. We need individuals that can create social media content that can help us with community outreach. Um, we're in the process of doing our community needs assessment, which is a, a, um, a long survey where we interview uh, individuals all over the county and we ask them, what are, what are the needs? The goal is to get to the root of the problem and also to create, to then analyze and create programs that would um, fill in the gap so we can find out how we can best help the community. Uh, just real quick, um, homeless services, uh, we provide, oops, okay. I don't think I have a lot of time because um, someone else has to present. But <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, we don't have a lot of time, but I invite you to come to our breakout room. Um, if you are a writer, if you feel like, you know what, I wish I can create social media content. I could help you on Twitter or social media. I can create flyers. I can create uh, marketing material. If, if you want to learn about how to best um, help the community overcome and bring people out of poverty, come to Community Action three hours, two hours a week, we highly appreciate it because in order to really help our community, we have to do it together. And we appreciate diversity and any, everyone has something to offer. So you are welcome here. We will be in our breakout room. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Roxanne. Hopefully <laughs> I didn't forget anything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Um, okay, so next we have California Coastal Commission, and that should be Becca. Becca, are you here? Yes, I Hi, am. Hi, Becca. Okay, great. Go ahead. Great. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, wait, wrong button. Hold on. Present. Okay. Hope you can all see this. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Becca. I use she, her pronouns. And I'm here to talk with you all about volunteering with the California Coastal Commission. And um, yes, and that is my roommate hugging a bucket of trash. So uh, you'll learn about more about that later. Um, so the California Coastal Commission, it's a regulatory uh, state agency and our mission is to protect and enhance the California coast and ocean for present and future generations. And I work for our public education program, which works to increase public knowledge of coastal and marine resources, and to engage the public in coastal protection and restoration activities. And we also have a K-12 art contest, which is where this pelican uh, drawing comes from. And there are a few ways that you all can get involved. Uh, one of them, and I'm gonna be talking about specifically our cleanup programs because they're right now the most COVID safe to do. Uh, we have our neighborhood cleanup programs, which uh, are on your own time, your neighborhoods. We have our year-round adopt a beach or adopt a spot program where a group uh, can clean up a beach or a spot three times to adopt it. And we have our coastal cleanup day program, which is every third Saturday um, in September. This year it's on September 18th, 2021. 
Uh, but today I'm going to talk about our neighborhood cleanup program because that right now is the most uh, accessible due to COVID reasons. Um, but I'm going to talk first about the importance of trash cleanups. So trash cleanups at both the beach and uh, inland areas, basically anywhere, they're really important uh, because they prevent plastic pollution uh, from harming wildlife, like the sea turtle here. I'm sure we've all seen similar pictures of birds and wildlife eating plastic. Uh, and they prevent this plastic from breaking down into smaller pieces called microplastics, which actually they pollute our water and our air and our uh, food chains. It's estimated that um, people, we eat about a credit card every week worth of plastic just by breathing it in and eating fish or whatnot. Um, but trash cleanups, they also uh, help tackle the root cause of plastic pollution, which is um, uh, they help monitor trash in the environment. Um, and data collected from these cleanups is used to um, push for policies and legislations that uh, are used to combat marine debris, uh, specifically plastic pollution. So here, um, this is a graph of our top 10 items picked up last year during our coastal cleanup in 2020. It's usually the same every year. Cigarette butts are usually number one, except this year, uh, I mean, last year, uh, PPE, like gloves and masks, were number 12, the number 12 most picked up item during coastal cleanup. Um, and usually these numbers are about the same every year. Um, so, uh, yeah, data collection. So all those items in the, as shown in the previous slides, we know that they were within the top 10 because people tracked it. And they've been tracking it for the past uh, 25 or something years. And this data has been used to support um, different policies and legislations to combat past plastic pollution, uh, including California statewide plastic bag ban and styrofoam food packaging bans in over 80 cities and also um, some stormwater legislation in a couple of cities. So um, collecting data during these cleanups, it might not feel like a big deal, but it actually does make a difference. Um, so how to do it during uh, neighborhood cleanups is you just download it. You can download an app called CleanSwell. It's on iOS and Android. And you can just download it. You can create a team name if you want. Um, and you can just click start collecting. And then you, while you're on your cleanup with the group or by yourself, you can just click these uh, buttons on your, uh, uh, so you can just click the buttons of, uh, as you can see, there's a list of items like cigarette butts and balloons. You just click on the buttons to uh, add it to your account. And then when you submit it after your cleanup, it gets uploaded to an international database of uh, marine debris. Um, and you could, um, you could actually view it, view your data at coastalcleanupdata.org. Um, and I want to emphasize that this data actually makes a difference. This here is a graph of um, plastic grocery bags as a percentage of all debris picked up on Coastal Cleanup Day from 2014 to 2017. And um, as you can see, uh, it's been decreasing, that percentage. Uh, the California plastic bag ban was passed in 2016, which is like the fourth data point here. But there were local bag bans implemented in the years prior uh, to the ban. Um, and as you can see, um, with the ban, the percentage has decreased, uh, which shows that the ban has been working to decrease the number of plastic bags in the environment. So uh, in that way, this data collection is pretty um, radical, getting at the root of uh, plastic pollution by uh, scientists and policymakers using it to um, pass this kind of legislation. Uh, so just to wrap up here, our cleanup opportunities uh, that are the most COVID friendly right now, neighborhood cleanups on your own time. You can just pick up trash in your neighborhoods, in your parks, uh, on your streets. Uh, make sure to log your data on CleanSwell. We have our adoptive user right off the spot opportunities. Um, and you can find all this information at coastal.ca.gov. And then Coastal Cleanup Day is uh, this fall in September, September 18th. And in, in Ventura County, you can go to bccoastcleanup.org to learn about uh, how to get involved when that time comes. And if you have any questions, uh, this is my contact information, rebecca.sharf at coastal.ca.gov. Um, 
And you could also go to coastalcleanupday.org to learn more. And if you want more information, I will be in um, the breakout room. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, Thank you, Becca. Um, it yeah. looks like I'm having a little trouble with the breakout rooms. They keep closing. So um, please, um, I'd appreciate your patience. I, I will continue to keep opening them. Um, and then, um, okay. So next we have um, Community Advocacy Coalition. And we have Byron. Hi, Byron. Go ahead. Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Okay. Um, okay, you should now be able to go ahead. Okay. Yes, we can see that. I could not understand a single word. Yeah, I'm having an issue. No, we can't, un can't understand you, Byron. It might be your headset. No, you still sound the same. Oh, try it again. Oh, no, you're muted now. Angela, do you maybe want to take over? Sure. sure. Okay. Can you okay. all hear me okay? Yes. So first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, present. And uh, Byron, you'll just have to click the uh, uh, PowerPoint for me. Uh, we just want to give you a brief organizational overview of uh, CAC. We've been in the community since about 2013, and uh, we are here to provide um, a voice for social justice in our community. And we're here as a 501c3 nonprofit uh, advocacy organization. And our goal is to provide uh, a voice for the community. So next screen. Can you flip the screen? Okay, very good. You can flip it again. We have committees within uh, CAC and uh, we have a board of directors and then we do have committee work and there are five active committees. One is health and wellness, education, the legal piece, um, economic, and then there's positive circle. That is our, uh, those are our five social justice committees. And um, because of the pandemic, this has given us an opportunity to take a look at all of uh, our committee work so that we can reestablish our uh, advocacy platform. Next slide, please. So our initiatives include the following. As you can see, we've been very active and, and these initiatives include things we've done in the past and what we're working on now. Everything that you see in red is uh, our new initiative. But we have been involved in black brown collaborations and that's going to continue through our efforts of uh, cross-cultural uh, collaboration, uh, community gardens, 
uh, cultural idioms. We uh, actually had some funding to do some work in that area. Now we're looking at HBCUs. You probably, especially since the um, since uh, Kamala Harris, you probably heard a little more about HBCUs, historically black uh, college and universities. And um, they are definitely in the forefront and we want to introduce uh, HBCUs to the West Coast. And uh, Byron is actively involved in introducing to some of the universities and colleges in the areas, uh, not to compete, compete, but as a cultural piece and understanding the significance of HBCUs. Also, I wanna flip down to the highlighted social justice community research. We have just engaged in a uh, social research uh, process um, and gleaned information from our community about what is important in our community. And so we did this last year and with the help of Cal State University Channel Island Sociology Department, Dr. Downing and his wonderful sociology Depart, uh, school um, class, they uh, assisted us in uh, the data analysis and gave in January an outstanding presentation on the data that we had collected. And so we're very proud of that. And we've shared that with many organizations throughout the county. And as a result of that, we are engaged in strategic planning initiatives uh, to revamp our CAC and again, because of the pandemic, we've had this time to really just unpackage uh, this data and to begin the process of establishing our um, community planning collaborative that's gonna take place on the 18th of May. And so it's a wonderful opportunity for any students that wanna get on the ground floor of uh, reestablishing the foundation of CAC, we invite you. So wellness workshops, we call salons as well, we've uh, uh, provided those. Next slide. So as you can see, we have had several town hall meetings. This is kind of uh, our bread and butter as well uh, to the community is to provide quarterly town hall meetings. And the town hall sessions are to bring the community together and provide some community education in areas of interest uh, in the area, uh, the areas that we identify economic, education, health and wellness, um, so on and so forth. So as you can see, we have had our share of town hall assemblies and we are just very pleased that in 2021, we will be uh, teaming with the uh, Juneteenth committee who is sponsoring what we call Forgotten Images. It's going to be on the campus of Cal State University Channel Islands, and I think we do have volunteers that are helping already in that area. But I want to give a shout out because Brian Landers, who is the chair, is on this call as well. It's going to be at Cal State University in the Grand Salon. Forgotten Images is a, uh, is a mobile museum of all sorts of artifacts of uh, uh, Black culture, starting from Africa, um, the uh, uh, slave trade, and uh, the uh, uh, early 19th century, 20th century, and you want to remember forgotten images. Hopefully, if all goes well, it's going to be in the fall of this year on the campus. You'll hear more about that. Next slide. So uh, historically, Black we, colleges, as I mentioned. I don't know if you can hear me now. Oh, you're back. You're back. Yay. Would you like for me to pick? OK, go ahead. Can you hear me now? We can hear you much better. <laughs> OK. Yes. Um, sorry for the audio challenges. Um, are historically Black colleges and universities uh, initiative is a project that we're working closely with the university in a partnership, we're trying to co connect one or more HBCUs with the Channel Islands campus. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty be working directly uh, with Dr. Yao on that project, and we hope to be able to announce uh, some more information on this uh, soon. 
Uh, also, um, I, I'm not sure if Angela highlighted our, um, our community-based radio initiative, but we do uh, have one of three Black-owned radio stations in the state. It's an FM station. We broadcast locally on 99.3 FM. And part of our programming, we're developing a, an HBCU radio uh, show, which we expect that to uh, be a monthly show. And we're anticipating that CSU CI will be part of that project. Uh, Angela already touched on the social justice risk initiative, but maybe this is an opportunity to talk specifically about the uh, matrix and the community planning collaborative, Angela. Sure, um, just very briefly again, um, out of the, the data of research that was presented by the Cal State University uh, Sociology Department, Dr. Downing and uh, students, we were able to put together um, a matrix uh, comprised of the survey results and we've identified about 10 areas that we want to drill down and invite the community to a collaborative planning workshop to help us reformat and reform CAC. And so out of the survey matrix, we now have a planning collaborative that will meet in May and we will have breakout sessions so that for instance, we will have uh, the suggestion is that we consider home gardens as well as community gardens now, and also nature walks. So we want people to help us design that. Uh, also with regards to our cross-cultural engagement, we will talk about organizations in the county that we want to partner with and um, work hand in hand with, that's part of our mission. Uh, also, our Positive Circle, big shout out for Positive Circle, which is our youth, young persons uh, initiative. We have in the past had spoken word. We've had various initiatives sponsored by the youth uh, that are part of CAC, and we want to continue that and expand it. We want to expand it to um, include uh, a leadership training and that sort of thing. So in terms of our initiatives, um, our current or we're calling short-term planning is through the year of 2022. So whatever we design out of the community collaborative workshop, it will help to establish our um, programming through the year of 2022. And our immediate uh, uh, plans are to uh, continue and do some uh, immediate, intermediate planning through 2023, 26. And then of course, the long-term planning is for CAC beyond 2026. Mm -hmm. So there are opportunities, opportunities for advocacy, participate with our positive circle and helping us uh, 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 round out our platform through 2022 certainly social media platforms. That's an area that we uh, certainly could benefit from expertise from those who enjoy this, this area of, uh, uh, in, in terms of developing social media. Uh, also the coordination and planning of our town hall. Uh, as we revamp our town hall format, um, we could certainly utilize individuals that can assist us and that would include also, you know, areas of marketing and getting information out to the community. As Byron mentioned, 99.3 FM, and I would uh, shout out, uh, just download the, the app and you will, I think, enjoy the uh, music. We also are putting together interviews, um, uh, uh, interview format. So all of this is kind of in the, uh, beginning um, intermediary stage. And so it's a good time to, to, to join CAC. Uh, we need individuals to assist in the areas of business administration, sales and marketing, definitely the social media platforms and the technical engineering 
that it takes to run a radio station. Every time a program is placed, uh, is put on, it takes uh, at least two people uh, to man uh, the controls. So, or to one. Uh, thanks, the Angela. And, <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, and and I'll jump in here real quick. Um, we welcome. We can use uh, volunteers in all of the areas of our advocacy and our radio station. Uh, we currently have one intern and one volunteer uh, that are working with us from CSUCI and because of our, the nature of our relationship with the university, uh, there are plenty of opportunities and we welcome one and all. Um, these are some of our collaborative partners. Uh, we have other partners, but I wanted to uh, leave a little time here for questions. Uh, are there any questions? Come Myron, on, we, can some... do, we can do questions in the breakout rooms, okay. if okay. that's okay with you all. Yes. Okay. okay. How do we nope. do time-wise? Uh, we're running a little behind, but you have important information, so that's okay. So um, I will... If I oh, may add this, I will include the email if you're interested and the phone number uh, if anybody is interested, but join us in the breakout room, okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, it's on the screen, Angela. Thank you. Okay, so next up we okay. have Health thank Corps. You. Thank you, Byron. All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Samantha Cade Imnisi. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am a program coordinator for the organization Health Corps. So just give me a moment. I'm going to share my screen quickly. Uh, unfortunately, it says you cannot start share screen share until the other participant is sharing. So I might need. Okay. okay. I think Go we're ahead. okay now. Perfect. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Let me get this going. Okay. And present. All right, hopefully you can see this. So here is my introductory slide. Um, and I'm here with you all for the um, Channel Islands Virtual Volunteer Fair. So just kind of a quick elevator pitch about Health Corps. We are a nonprofit organization founded in 2003. And essentially our purpose is to give adolescent youth, um, particularly high school students, the tools needed to improve their physical and mental well-beings so that they can learn to live more productive and happier and healthier lives. So our mission is to strengthen our greater Oxnard, Ventura, Thousand Oaks, Camarillo communities with the most innovative approaches uh, to health and wellness. And so we are hopeful that by sharing our resources and encouraging a more healthier culture around health and wellness, that the students that are impacted by our resource and, and programming will also be able to have a ripple effect within their families, their friends, and in the communities that they live within and are serving as well. So um, with that being said, um, I included a slide of just different directives and responsibilities that I do as a coordinator, but just being mindful of time, I'm just going to quickly share current and existing volunteer opportunities that are available for those who are interested in partnering or supporting Health Corps. So at this time, we have three different volunteer opportunities. Um, the first one um, that is located to the far left is just being a program volunteer. So with that being said, I do want to kind of preface this that we have about five weeks left of the academic school year within Oxnard Union High School District. So it might not be enough time to do kind of more standard programmatic efforts that we normally do within the academic year. However, if you do feel compelled to support Health Court within the next five weeks up until their academic year concludes, um, there are opportunities to do in person as well as socially distant contributions. Um, so the cool part about this is that we can volunteer around your schedule. Um, and that would be in collaboration with myself and just figuring out um, what the schools may need in terms of health course support and figuring out how we can provide that to them, especially now that we are entering the final weeks of the spring semester. 
And then the second opportunity I'm here to share with you all is the Teens Make Health Happen program volunteer. So Teens Make Health Happen is a programmatic effort that has been piloted with Health Corps starting in February. And essentially it's a 12 week long program um, that can be embedded within a classroom or within um, a, a youth center or a youth club um, that supports students as they learn more about human centered thinking and creating um, projects that will support addressing a need within a community that they choose to support. So with that being said, we're looking for um, not just new clubs, but also facilitators. So if you are interested in becoming a co-facilitator and walking alongside students over the course of three months with this program, then we are eager to invite you to that. Um, also, we are looking for opportunities to expand and to bring this programming into different parts of our county here in Ventura. So with that being said, um, if you have any connections to local community-based organizations, um, that would like to um, bring this programming to the students that uh, and the adolescents they have access to, then uh, we are eager to um, kind of initiate that process. Also, there's a component within the program that allows um, local community-based organizations, NGOs, nonprofits, et cetera, to become um, potential interviewees or guest speakers for the club. So if you have connections as well, which this is a great platform because we are surrounded by a lot of community-based organizations at this very moment, um, then we are hopeful that we can um, bring some more um, voices to these students and show and reflect with them um, that you can make a difference here, especially when it comes to addressing a health challenge. And then last but not least, um, we have a gift and activity volunteer. So one of the cool components of my position is that I get to support efforts with staff as well, um, staff particularly within Oxford Union High School District. And so one of the ways that we support is by doing staff appreciation gifts. So given that there are upwards of 2000 staff members within this school district and over 17,000 students, and there's only one coordinator, which is myself, I'm always looking for additional support if anyone felt like they wanted to provide socially distant contributions by creating kits. So that could be like creating a foot soak and being able to distribute that um, to a particular school or maybe creating um, a stress ball out of uh, locally resourced materials. So that all goes to say, I'd be providing the materials, you would be able to do it at your own pace in the um, comforts of your own space as well. And then um, we coordinate a time to pick it up and then I would deliver it to the school. So with that being said, these are the three volunteer opportunities that Health Corps can share with you all at this point in time. Um, here's my contact information, but I'm also gonna be in a breakout room. So if you have any questions about what Health Corps does and the different volunteer opportunities, you can find me inside the breakout room. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Sam. Okay, next we have Canine Adoption and Rescue League, and we have our very own Ruben Alarcon ready to present. Hi, everyone. Uh, hopefully you can hear me and see this screen. Um, I am actually a biology professor here at Cal State Channel Islands. I've been here for about 12 years now. And for the last 11 years, I've been volunteering with this wonderful organization known as uh, Canine Adoption and Rescue League. And I'm here to share just some of the opportunities that are available for volunteering with Carl. This is Desi, one of our longtime residents. She's a, a, a love. Um, Carl is a nonprofit uh, no-kill shelter and rescue. We, we take in all breeds. Uh, we take in uh, 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 senior dogs, dogs that have health issues, dogs that have behavioral issues. Um, we've worked with uh, some of the most severe cases throughout the county. And we provide a lifetime commitment to all the dogs. So if the dog comes in and maybe they get fostered or adopted and if that doesn't work out, we take them back. So we follow them throughout their lives. Uh, as I mentioned, we primarily work in Ventura County, but we're also starting to branch out and pull dogs from other counties where there's uh, an overpopulation of dogs. And we've even participated in some uh, international rescues bringing dogs from as far away as China and Israel where they were gonna be euthanized. So we collaborate with a lot of other dog rescues to ensure the, the safety and well-being of dogs. Um, in terms of volunteer operation uh, uh, opportunities, 
we have several teams where we need assistances. Direct dog care are the volunteers that actually meet and work with the dogs on a regular basis. So every morning from about 9 to 11.30, a small number of volunteers are at the kennels and the kennels are located in Santa Paula. Um, they're there walking dogs, playing catch, playing fetch, you know, socializing them and giving them that one-on-one -on -one human interaction. We also have a group that goes out to local um, pet food stores on the weekends, or at least used to pre-COVID, to take out some of our dogs and try to get them adopted. We have an outreach uh, group that tries to put out information on social media platforms, try to, tries to do uh, fundraisers for us. We also have a thrift store, and this is a huge uh, uh, revenue stream for us, a thrift store in Ventura um, on Thompson and Maine. And uh, we have volunteers that work there, uh, you know, putting out the goods, selling the goods, and, and they supply a large fraction of our revenue to keep our dogs um, fed and, and housed here. Then we have a group that tries to increase our volunteer base, communicate with the volunteers. And lastly, since we have this kennel, in Santa Paula, we need a, a large number of people to help out in, in maintaining the facility. So I'm usually there on the weekends weeding um, and, and doing all sorts of repairs once I'm done walking dogs. But these are some of the many ways in which we can actually take volunteers and have folks assist us. Aside from this, I want to mention to the CI students that um, as a professor, I've been acting as a liaison. So if you need to do, say, a senior capstone, you can actually do a senior capstone with Carl. And I've been working with students from communications as well as performing arts and even biology students in doing these projects on these grounds. And, and I would be your direct supervisor and work with you and help you on those projects. So that is another thing that, another way you can participate with Carl. I'll just give, you know, leave up this little quote here by uh, Chrissy, who's uh, involved in many areas. It is a really good uh, community to be a part of. It makes you feel really good. I started really participating with Carl about six, seven years ago. There was a flood in the area that, that damaged the grounds. And so I showed up for that and I, I just got hooked. Initially I went because I felt bad for the dogs. You know, the poor things, they don't have homes, they're in kennels. Um, but I kept going and I continue to go because they're treated so well and they're loved and the dogs know it, as you can see in these photos. Every day they have their volunteers that go out and interact with them. Um, they get amazing medical care. Um, and, and so Carl needs help, you know, to, to keep fulfilling uh, their responsibilities of caring for these dogs. And so any way you can volunteer or donate to the organization, that would be wonderful. Um, here's ways, you know, uh, our contact information. We do have uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook pages. We often have uh, flyers there for various fundraisers. And if you go to our website, www.carldogs.org, that is where you'll find a link that you could fill out a volunteer application form. You submit that, and then one of the volunteer coordinators would get in touch with you. You would do an orientation video. Um, and once you do that and, and sign the, the waiver forms, you'd be directed to one of the teams where you'd want to get, uh, you know, volunteer and work in. Um, because of time, I'll stop here with that and just end with this last slide. If you're in the market for a dog, um, don't shop. Please go out and adopt. There's many wonderful dogs throughout um, the county and other places. And Carl's a great place where you might be able to find um, your new best friend. And with that, um, I want to thank everyone. And I'll head over to the Carl uh, breakout room if anybody has any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. OK, up next, we have American Red Cross and Jennifer Samaritan. Hey, um, can everyone hear me OK? Yes. Perfect. Um, so thank you, everyone, so much for help for helping make this happen today and for giving us the space to share about some of the volunteer opportunities at Red Cross. Um, so as Jennifer said, my name is Jennifer also Samaritan and I am the Senior Volunteer Recruitment Specialist for the American Red Cross's Pacific Coast Chapter. Um, so at Red Cross, we have a super powerful mission of preventing and alleviating human suffering in the face of emergencies by mobilizing the power of volunteers and the generosity of donors. Um, so we are a volunteer-led organization, which means that 90% of 
of all humanitarian work at the Red Cross is accomplished by our amazing volunteers. Um, so since 90% of our workforce are volunteers, there are countless ways and opportunities to volunteer at our organization. And so after taking five to 10 minutes to submit your application at redcross.org slash volunteer, um, someone will contact you within seven to 10 days to schedule a get to know you chat um, in which they help match you with the volunteer role that meets both your time availability and your interests. Um, so I always like to share that so people don't feel intimidated when they're picking something on the site that interests them. It's never locked in, in set in stone. Um, and actually we really encourage people to just kind of get in their foot in the door since we're such a large organization. Um, you'll slowly get familiarized with different things and we highly encourage people to try new roles, um, to take training to um, some people volunteer in multiple different ways. Um, and so whatever your schedule and interests, whether you're looking to volunteer from home, um, or volunteer in the field locally or nationally. That's a cool part about us being a national organization. All of our training is exactly the same. So you can deploy to hurricanes on the East Coast, um, you know, and, and help with various types of man-made and natural disasters throughout the US. Um, and we also have opportunities with working for kids and adults. So um, definitely say that we can help you find a good fit at our organization. Um, I'm going to share my screen super quickly. Uh, here we go. Um, so I just wanted to share this to kind of give a little glimpse into how our organization is structured. Um, and as you can see, um, we have what we call our five lines of service. Um, and each of these lines of service have volunteer opportunities within it. Um, some of them, the only one, uh, preparedness, health, and safety services is actually only paid staff, so there aren't volunteer um, opportunities in that area, but you can take CPR and first aid and, and training and interact with that line of service in that way. Um, and so what these um, lines of service are meant to do and what's within our vision as an organization is we inspire to turn compassion into action. So that all people affected by disasters across the country and around the world receive care, shelter, and hope. Um, that our communities are ready and prepared for disasters. Um, that everyone in our country has access to safe, life-saving blood and blood products. Um, that all of members of our service, our armed forces, and their families find support and comfort whenever needed. And in an emergency, that there are always trained individuals nearby ready to use their Red Cross skills. Um, to save lives. And so those are just like examples of how um, we try to accomplish that mission going back to it of preventing and alleviating human suffering. Um, so that's something I always appreciate is these like tangible action items. Um, one thing that I did want to highlight before sharing a quick video with you all um, is just an encouragement to get prepared now for wildfire season. Uh, we in Central California know all too well how devastating wildfires can be to our communities. Um, last year alone, wildfires burned 4.3 million acres across California and actually led to the largest disaster relief operation in um, our region, our Red Cross region of Central California that um, we've ever responded to. Um, and throughout the nation, the Red Cross provided more emergency shelter, more nights of emergency shelter than ever before in recorded history. Um, so unfortunately, um, there remains a high risk of major wildfires this year um, that's um, starting earlier than expected, um, both in our state and in our region. So it's more important to ever than ever to make sure that we and the communities we are serve that we serve are ready before peak wildfire season um, so that everyone knows how to stay safe and respond to wildfires when they occur. Um, and I'll put these links I'm mentioning in the chat, but you can go to redcross.org slash prepare um, to review the three steps of journal preparedness of getting a kit, making a plan and being informed, um, as well as steps specifically on how to prevent and to respond to wildfires. Um, we'll be hosting um, throughout the year, but an upcoming one on Saturday, May 1st, what we call a Be Red Cross Ready presentation that's hosted by our Regional Disaster Prevention and Preparedness Manager. Um, and this will, again, give those tangible action items of you know, what to do in the event of emergency and how can you can keep you and your loved ones safe. Um, 
And then on my end, as a volunteer recruiter, um, if you're interested in becoming a Red Cross volunteer to support our community's preparedness, response, and recovery during wildfire season, we're encouraging everyone to apply and get trained now. Um, that way you're ready to respond um, in the event of an emergency in Ventura. Um, and so I'm just gonna close out by sharing this quick video. Awesome. Oh, and let me know if you can hear, oh, here we go, share sound. Hear the sound, okay. There's power in this American Red Cross vest. The power to inspire hope, to comfort your neighbor, to help your community. But this power doesn't come from the vest itself. It comes from our diverse workforce who wear it. People who stand up when disasters strike, who roll up their sleeves and give their time, energy, and spirit to provide help and hope in times of crisis. Communities across the country are already facing extraordinary adversity, making the upcoming season of natural disasters even more critical. America needs people like you now more than ever. People with the power to help their neighbors and communities when they need it the most. Become a volunteer and put on the red vest. Join the Red Cross, where your time and talent can make a real difference in people's lives. So thank you guys again so much for letting me share. I'll be in the breakout room and put those links in the chat that I mentioned. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, so next up we have Step Up Ventura and they provided me with a video. So I am going to play that one here. And is a 501c3 okay. nonprofit located in Ventura County. Step Up Ventura's mission is to provide therapeutic services and access to childcare and preschool for children ages 0 to 5 who are affected by homelessness or at risk of homelessness. Specially trained Step Up Ventura staff and volunteers work with children on a one-to-one -one basis to resolve trauma and create a feeling of trust and safety for the child. Step Up Ventura provides toys and materials that are both nurturing and educationally stimulating to the infant rooms and preschool classrooms. The majority of children impacted by or at risk for homelessness are behind their peers in language development and need intensive help catching up before they will be ready for kindergarten. Step Up Ventura's supportive services help children grow in all areas of development, including understanding feelings, building healthy bodies and trusting adult child relationships, having fun and safe ways for self-expression, and getting along with their peers. Step Up Ventura's staff and volunteers bring a variety of activities to the classroom, creating an environment where children can explore their world with curiosity and enthusiasm for learning. A child and parent continues to get Step Up Ventura support until the family has established a secure home and the child is reaching age appropriate developmental milestones. If you would like more information on how to get involved, please contact the volunteer coordinator at volunteer at stepupventura.org. Thank you. Okay, great. So now, um, so that was Step Up Ventura. Um, and now we have Kids and Families Together with Jenny. Um, it looks like Jenny stepped away from her desk. Are you there, Jenny? Okay, maybe we'll move on to Ventura County Resource Conservation District with Annalee and Andy. All right, great. Just give me one second and I'll share okay. my screen. Oh, 
looking good, it's gotta wash your car. All right, uh, hi everyone. My name is Annalie Saradine and I work for the Ventura County Resource Conservation District, also known as the VCRCD. I actually started as a volunteer intern here myself and there are so many great opportunities for CSUCI students. Here's both volunteers or interns while helping the communities in Ventura County. So what is VCRCD? We are a California special district and our mission is to collaborate with landowners, government agencies, and other willing partners to facilitate the conservation and restoration of Ventura County's natural resources for current and future generations. We strive to be a leader in education and outreach for the county. Our standards-based programs bring the local community closer to nature while offering rigorous scientific learning and research opportunities. The first step towards protecting our resources is understanding them. Our team works with the public and private entities, citizen scientists, students, and volunteers of all ages to study our environment. Land stewardship is also essential to a healthy environment, and we help landowners access and plan low impact projects, manage landscapes, reduce erosion, uh, combat climate change, and save water. We're located about 10 to 15 minutes from CSUCI in SOMIS and have opportunities for both in-person and virtual volunteers and interns. So some of our current projects. At the VCRCD, we are constantly working at multiple projects at the same time that help educate the community while conserving our important natural resources. Some of our programs include the CDFA Healthy Soils Program, which studies and demonstrates applications of compost and mulch on about 40 acres of newly planted uh, citrus. Sea Swamp, which provides technical and financial assistance to farmers to implement management measures that improve nutrient and pesticide management and on-farm irrigation efficiency in the Cayugas Creek watershed. We also have wild for recovery programs that work to assist those who have been affected by fires in Ventura County, as well as educating the community on fire prevention methods for the future. Our monarch program focuses on enhancing overwintering habitat for monarchs and other pollinators in the county through environmental restoration, vegetation removal and replacement, habitat protection, and long-term management and monitoring. These are just a few of our programs we currently have. We also track data on nutrient and irrigation management technologies through our II Merlin project and work to decrease invasive pests known as ACP through our Save Ojai Citrus program. Our programs run throughout the county and are not just limited to office work. So we also give uh, volunteers an opportunity to spend a lot of time outdoors if you want to. Oop. Sorry. <laughs> so how to get involved. Uh, we rely on volunteers and interns to implement our con conservation projects throughout the county. There are opportunities for those within the sciences and even those pursuing paths outside of the sciences. As a volunteer intern, you can assist in habitat restoration, educational outreach, community engagement, uh, planting and gardening, and data entry and research assistance. You can sign up for our, our newsletter to learn more about opportunities or send uh, Andy Sperka, the resource conservation specialist, an email at andysperka.vcrcd at gmail.com or me an email at annalee.vcrcd at gmail.com to be notified of future opportunities or for an internship. We have opportunities coming up as soon as May 1st, which is actually this Saturday, to participate in our Monarch Restoration Program. So please reach out at any time with your questions to my email or in our breakout room and check out our website at vcrcd.org. I'll also drop my email in the chat so anyone that has any questions can also email me. Thank you. Thank you, Annalie. Um, okay, it looks like Jenny is back. Jenny, would you like to go next? Yes, thank you. Okay. Is 
Sorry. Okay. So yes, I'm Jenny Footfoy with Kids and Families Together. I'm the Community Resource uh, Manager. And um, Kids and Families has been around for about 20 years. We are a nonprofit organization. We serve foster families, which are now called resource families, kinship, um, which are those relatives who are raising other relatives' children, whether that's on an informal um, arrangement or whether it is um, whether they are court dependent, um, legal guardians, as well as those who have adopted through the system, and then also the birth families who are navigating the child welfare system. So essentially, we are wrapping our arms around the whole family. Um, so we're serving them with therapy. We have uh, peer partner programs, so we meet with the families one-on-one. -on -one. With COVID, it's been tele-health um, care, so it's been virtual or over the phone. Um, and so they have a peer partner that they work with, and we also provide resources, um, referrals to other um, services as well to help the family, to really stabilize the family and for the preservation um, for the physical, emotional, and mental health uh, of the children. All of our programs are really based on um, trauma-informed as well as attachment-focused. So we're really working to build and strengthen the family together. So having an understanding between each other versus it being more of uh, a judgmental, it's more of trying to understand and really strengthen the family together. So we do have different programs. Um, we also do workshops and we have support groups as well. And that's for um, the foster parents, kinship, adoptive, as well as the birth families. And when, even when we're doing our therapy, um, it's called a dyadic approach. So we're working together with the children and the families together. So it's never just one or the other. It's really building that relationship together, which we find has been um, tremendously um, helpful and has really made great improvements and stabilized the family. Um, and we do have a therapy dog, his name is Charles, and he does do therapy with families and with the children. And he also goes to our events that we um, do in the community. And I'll be talking more about that. So our volunteer opportunities, and we, um, we do use the portal for uh, VC volunteer, um, for the Volunteer County uh, portal with United Way. And we're very grateful for them. It's really helped us get a lot of volunteers to help support our events. Um, so we do event planning and we also have a fund development committee. Um, we are needing help also with even social media marketing. We have the JEDI group. Um, so we just started that out of the civil unrest that occurred in the past year and how to really um, build equi equity within our um, agency. So it's, it's justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We're working on um, you know, making our brochures, our flyers, and our marketing materials to be culturally sensitive and diverse and inclusive, um, as well as do Spanish translation. So we're really needing help with that. Um, we do community outreach as well, and then we have our gift away events, which I'm gonna talk more about our gift away events. So we put on about seven or eight gift away events for our families. It really helps them um, financially. There's a lot of hardship uh, that families go through caring for other um, relatives' children or other individuals' children. And um, so we do about eight a year and we get donations from the community. We work with many partners, but we're really needing volunteers to help at the events, help collect um, donations ahead of time, help sort, organize, things like that. So these are just some pictures from our past events. Now with COVID, um, we do we are following um, the guidelines for CDC and also the county. So we do have strict regulations with wearing a mask and things like that. Um, starting back in April is when we first did our first drive throughs and it was distributing meals to our families. And we did about 20,000 meals in partnership with World Central Kitchen as well as Rincon Brewery. And we did that for from April through June. And then we hopped on into July, we did a summer of love event. And then in October, we did a harvest fest. And it's always um, providing things based on the time of the year. So the summer of love was all about, you know, getting back to schools, back to school supplies. We had leftover spring baskets from our spring event. We had home goods and clothing and things like that. And then for harvest fest, we do costumes, um, 
coats and clothing and, and other items. Oops, that's weird. I cannot move my screen. Why is that? Okay, it's not letting me go to the next slide. Oh, okay. In November, um, we did a Thanksgiving basket gift away, and in February, it's caring for our caregivers. So we always want to show our love and support for the families who are caring for other people's children. So we did a special um, event for them. And then in December is our holidays gift away, and it's all about the kids, giving toys to the kids and clothing, and also supporting the families with gift cards and home goods and things like that. Um, we just had our spring fling event, and so um, we were up at Poinsettia Pavilion. It was beautiful up on the hill, and it's just, here's a picture of all of our volunteers, and we usually get between 40 to 60 volunteers at our events because it's they're huge events, and we need a lot of support. So we did give um, spring baskets and clothing and toys, and we had the Easter Bunny there. Um, it was fantastic. Our upcoming events, we have a diaper and more gift away that's coming up next Friday. And then in June or July, we'll be doing a bike gift away. And then in August, we have a back to school gift away. So we are needing um, support um, for that. And we do have our sign up again under the United Ways portal. Um, you can also contact me if you are interested. Um, there's my contact information, and um, you can either email me or call me at extension 108. You can check out our, uh, our website, and our website has specific information for volunteers, so you can click on the link that has for volunteers, and, as well as our giftaways, and it'll just show more information. So again, for volunteers, we're looking for those, hey, if you, do you wanna join our events planning committee? Do you wanna help us plan our events for these children and, and our families? Do you want to help us get donations? So starting a collection or reaching out to potential donors or funders. Um, we need help with marketing and social media, things like that. And again, if you are a student who's maybe mastering in Spanish or something like that, we need help with um, the translation of our brochures and other marketing materials. And again, really, really focusing on how important it is for the cultural sensitivity and inclusion with, with everything that we're doing. So we're really focusing on that as well. So that is Kids and Families Together. And one of our mottos is, is it takes a loving village and we would love for you to be part of our loving village. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. So um, it's just about one o'clock and I just want to, if you have to go, I just want to remind everyone that we are recording this presentation and it will be up on our website. Um, if you want me to email it to you directly, um, go ahead and put your name in the chat and I will do that. Um, we do have three more presentations to go. So if you can, please, um, we would love to have your um, participation and watching. So, okay, next we have Melanie Barba with Women of Substance and Men of Honor. Go ahead, Melly. Hi, everybody. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Um, okay, so let me see. Um, my name is Melanie. I am the volunteer coordinator here at Women of Substance and Men of Honor. Um, who we are. Our mission is to provide resources to young men and young women in need who are ready to change their lives um, and who are who may have never been given an opportunity. Um, so our, the young men and women that we usually um, help are the detention youth um, and foster care youth transitioning out of group homes or um, just wanting to kind of get their life together. We're a nonprofit community service organization. Um, we're dedicated to physical, emotional, financial, and educational support. Um, so we help uh, the either the detention youth or the foster care youth kind of um, 
a transition into living on their own, um, getting what they need done, whether it is um, finding a job, um, housing, or maybe getting all the documents that they need. Um, our mission is to provide resources, networking, guidance, and support. Um, so we just kind of, you know, help them out in every aspect of life um, to kind of make the transition a little easier on them. Um, why we need volunteers. Um, thanks to your help, we're able to hold fundraisers. We have a lot of fundraisers that we um, that we hold, um, we we did a drive through um, to get a lot of um, items for our group homes, like um, laundry, all types of things for our group homes, for our foster care youth or our detention youth. We do educational and resource events, um, you know, going out in the community, spreading awareness, uh, community outreach and spreading awareness, kind of letting people know um, the need that there is for the detention youth coming out of the detention facility and for our foster care youth. And, you know, with your help, we're able to, you know, change as at risk youth um, one at a time. So these are some of our pictures of our, this is uh, before COVID, um, of our events. The first one is our uh, women's symposium where we went into the youth correctional facility and kind of gave information to the young ladies um, that so that they may have as they come out into society. Volunteer opportunities. Um, there are three main areas to volunteer. We have event health. Um, events are a little different this year because of COVID. Um, we do follow uh, the, the very strict um, COVID guidelines regarding our events. Some of our events went into uh, virtual. So we have our women's symposium again, where we go into the youth uh, correctional facility for the young ladies to kind of, you know, give them resources. Um, so when they come out um, into, into, you know, living their life out of the detention facility, we have our WASMO hoops. That's our three versus three um, uh, basketball tournament where we raise um, money for our housing program. Our housing program, we're able to house foster care youth, um, detention youth coming out of the detention facility um, to kind of get them on their feet. We have a scholarship luncheon on behalf of Elisa Davis um, where we raise money to help um, the foster care youth that want to go to school, um, the detention youth that want to, you know, go to school and they don't have money or they need money for books or um, whatever the case is for school. We have our annual breakfast of champions, which is just an annual fundraiser for housing um, and Thanksgiving lunch. Usually we bring out the group homes, however, because of COVID and, you know, the guidelines and everything. This last year we did a drive. Um, and we just went and delivered the food to the group homes that aren't able to go home. Um, our Christmas bags, we did a, we just assembled a Christmas bag for the detention youth in the youth correctional facility um, so that they may have a gift um, and they don't feel like, you know, forgotten. We have different programs within WASMO. We have an alpha leadership course where we kind of, that's, um, a course that we go into the youth correctional facility. However, because of COVID, we haven't been able to go, but we still hold them through Zoom, um, where we just help them lead with leadership skills, goals as they come out. Our Embracing Hearts Leadership course is for the young ladies in the youth correctional facility, and the Encouraging Hearts Leadership course is for our group homes. Um, so we just kind of help them get the resources and the skills to as they get ready to either come out into society or live on their own. Um, we adopt a, a we have an adopt a home group home family night where a volunteer is able to go in or a group of volunteers into the group home and just kind of spend time with the group home um, doing a, an activity. Um, we also have Santa Clarita probation camps where we just take in a, a sweet snack just to let them know that they haven't been forgotten. Um, we also have a mentoring program where it involves a small weekly commitment, allows youth, um, whether it's foster care youth or the detention youth, to get that one-on-one -on -one attention, that support um, for about 12 months um, to kind of, you know, help them know that somebody's there for them and help them navigate through um, life 
um, as they come out of the foster care system or as they come out of the detention care system. Our WASMO Hoops, um, this is our an event that's coming up here on June 12th. Um, COVID protocols will be enforced. It's, it's gonna be a safe event and spaces are limited. Um, but this is our um, three versus three basketball tournament where we help, where we raise most of our funds for our housing program. Um, a lot of these youth um, are in need of housing. Um, so we do like to provide either emergency housing for emancipated foster youth. Um, we sponsor um, high school foster youth teams. Um, so this is where our, our uh, funding comes for our housing program. Um, all proceedings raised uh, to WASPO Emergency Housing Program for foster youth and the detention youth also. Um, so this is kind of a little bit of people can donate um, or sponsor. We have sponsored packages um, and all of this information will be in our website. Um, and also if you're interested in volunteering, you can um, volunteering is on our website and I will also put my email on our chat below. Um, and just if you have any questions, just feel free to let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Okay, up next we have Katie Daniels with Ventura Land Trust. Are you here, Katie? Uh, I thought I saw you. Okay. Um, Anna Melendez, would you like to go next? Hi, Jennifer. Yes, that's okay. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Melendez. I work for Cabrillo Economic Development Corporation, or you may have heard of CEDC. We are a nonprofit organization and we house low-income families, farm workers, veterans, elderly, and special needs. And I also have a PowerPoint that I would like to share. I know we're short on time, so I can just go through it really fast if that's okay, Jennifer. Okay. <laughs> Can everyone see my screen? Okay, perfect. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. So this is our PowerPoint. As I mentioned, I work for a CEDC. Our mission is to provide housing, low-income housing for families in need. The communities that we serve are, we have 25 properties within Ventura County, which includes Ventura, Ojai, Satakoy, um, Fillmore, Santa Paula, Piru, Fillmore, and of course, Oxnard. And this is one of our properties here in Oxnard. I am a resident service coordinator and we do a lot of outreach. And I like to say we wear a lot of different hats. Um, we do admin work, but we also do a lot of outreach and community service uh, throughout our community. And which includes education opportunities for youth and adults that work that are currently living in our properties. We provide community resources for our residents. We also offer health fairs and nutrition classes, social and recreational activities, and advocacy for resident leadership. And we are seeking volunteers in our after school homework club, which is Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 to 4.45. We have brought Dr. Martin Alberto Gonzalez to present for our youth. We like our, we would like for our our youth to know more about college, and we like to bring special guests to motivate them and learn the importance about continuing higher education. And we are also big, big advocates on resident leadership, which we're also seeking help in. and food share as well. I don't know if many of you saw these blue boxes for a while last year. Uh, they are the Berryman. They provided food for our residents. I believe it was about eight or 10 of our properties that we were getting food for. And we were distributing those to our properties. And that is a lot of work where we definitely need the help in. 
So again, that's from that was from Barry Man, but right now uh, we're currently only doing food share since there's no other um, places that are offering the food for our residents. But we are working on other grants to get us food boxes for our residents again, since they did benefit a lot from this. We also do a lot of service learning. I have worked with CSUCI before. This is one of the examples, Dr. Chen students. And we also do capstone presentations and allow CSUCI students and other college students to come to our properties and also do their capstone here. And these are some of our students that are at the school program that we would like the volunteers to come and help out on. Especially if you're an art major, our kids love doing crafts, they love painting. I like to say that we do have a lot of little artists in our in our groups. And this is my information in case you are looking to volunteer. As mentioned, we do have volunteer opportunities for homework club, for food share, and also doing outreach, such as passing out flyers. We do monthly newsletters for all of our properties. So we need a lot of help passing out those flyers to our residents at our properties and also coming up with the flyers, looking out for resources. Um, all that is very helpful. And I'm sure that the students will be able to benefit from that as well, because then they will be getting that experience of doing the outreach for once they graduate, then they have to be out there on their own and outreach for, for a job in their career. So thank you for your time and I hope to get some volunteers. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, so last up we have Katie Daniels from uh, Ventura Land Trust. Hi everybody, thanks Jennifer. I'll go ahead and share my presentation with you here. Uh, my, um, I'm going to be looking at my other screen. I've got two screens going, but so I'm not ignoring you all. Um, uh, yeah, again, my name is Katie Daniels. I'm presenting on behalf of Ventura Land Trust. I am currently serving as land steward and volunteer coordinator. Um, you can visit our website, VenturaLandTrust.org, and you can contact me directly at Katie at VenturaLandTrust.org. So who are we and what are we doing? Well, we were established in 2003, but we, we were formerly known as Ventura Hillsides Conservancy. And then we changed our name um, as it became evident that we wanted to preserve more than hillsides. Um, so we're a non-governmental community-based uh, nonprofit conservation organization with over 650 members. We're an accredited land trust, which just means that we um, strive to meet certain standards for excellence and conservation permanence. And of course, our mission is to permanently protect the land, water, wildlife, and scenic beauty of the Ventura region for current and future generations. And in order to do that, we rely on volunteers. We do that through um, a few avenues. One is preservation, that's Ventura County Hills and Rivers, uh, habitat restoration through staff, docent, and volunteer work on our properties and education. We have two uh, educational partners, Ventura Wild and Once Upon a Watershed. As for our preserves, we have um, throughout Ventura, uh, Big Rock, Harmon Canyon, Willoughby, and Hayden, which is our private preserve and is used for educational purposes. And I'll go through these details in the slides to come. Um, here are our locations. We have um, Big Rock south of Foster Park and Hayden is uh, close by. And then we have Willoughby Preserve, which is located between the Main Street Bridge and the 101 overpass right off of the bike path near downtown. And uh, <laughs> the largest one, as you can see, is Harmon Canyon. That's over 2,000 acres and um, approximately 10 miles of uh, hiking right now, but they're always doing trail development. So that's um, going to expand greatly in the coming years. Big Rock Preserve, as I mentioned, is just south of Foster Park off of 33. 
It was acquired in uh, between 2009 and 2012. It's actually four smaller properties. Uh, and we manage the adjoining three. Um, it's, not a, it's not a large area, but there's a lot of work to be done on the preserve. And we do have uh, volunteer, plenty of volunteer opportunities there. Um, Harmon Canyon, as I mentioned, is our largest preserve. It's over 2,100 acres. Um, we just opened it in 2020. Um, visitors can enjoy hills and canyons that feature oak groves, stream crossings, and breathtaking views of the mountain ranges and coastlines in Channel Islands National Park. Uh, we do have a mountain lion on the property that we know of. So it's very exciting ongoing things over there. We have Willoughby Preserve, which is my main uh, area of focus. Right now, I manage the Ventura River Trash TMDL project on the property. So I monitor and collect trash on our preserve, Willoughby, and then uh, we continue our monitoring and collection all the way to the beach. So we're working in collaboration with state parks and the city and the county um, to keep the area clean and safe. A lot of volunteer opportunities here. Um, as I said, we rely on our volunteers to carry out our mission. Uh, we have lots of opportunities with habitat restoration, preserve maintenance. We have duties that could be carried out in the office or office related. Uh, we have a VLT ambassador. We do special events soon, hopefully. Um, and then with greater, uh, if you are interested in a greater commitment, you could look into internship opportunities as well as docent opportunities. Um, just to elaborate further on um, the habitat restoration and preserve maintenance, I would say those are our two areas of focus right now where we need the most help. Um, so we're doing things such as uh, planting native plants and trees and watering. Uh, for preserve maintenance, we do cleanups. As I mentioned in the river, we're collecting a lot of trash as you can see here in this photo in the top left. Um, <clears throat> We're clearing invasives and we are building tra trails, excuse me. In the office, we're doing things like um, maintaining the database and filing, mailing, things like that. Um, and then the docent work is, as I said, it's a greater commitment. Um, you'd be present on the property often and educating the visitors uh, about our rules um, and giving them tips on how to enjoy the property. Um, for more information, you're welcome to reach out to me directly, as I said, my email, katie at venturalandtrust.org. And you can also go through the website if you're interested in um, being a volunteer. Either way works for me, whatever's um, most um, convenient for you. And um, that, that's my short presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Okay, so it looks like um, we're all done with presentations. We're a little bit over on time. So um, again, this presentation um, uh, is gonna be, re it is recorded and it will be distributed. So um, if you missed any of the presentations, um, you are free to view that um, as soon as I get that out. And let me, um, I'm gonna share my own screen because this is um, all of the contact information that you've seen today um, is on this website. Um, we have, we also have videos, we have um, website links, um, and of course the contact information. So um, here's the website here. The short link is go.csuci.edu slash CCE Fair, and I can put that in the chat as well. Um, thank you all for participating. Um, I hope, um, you know, I know everyone's interested in your organizations. You all do great work, but I also hope that you get um, the volunteer resources you need. Um, and if there's anything I can do to help um, with that, just let me know. And, um, and I thank you for your uh, participation. So, um, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. We'll give everybody a warning. Um, it should close in about 60 seconds, and I'm going to stop recording.